Okie dokie, let's get this started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jay Lipman Live. Happy Wednesday. So happy to see you here today. So happy I could be here today. We got a lot to uh, to talk about. Um, yeah, if you're new here, sorry, I let me just get this out of the way right now. I ate way too much for lunch, and I'm in that like can't really take a full breath because I ate too much kind of situation. So, you know, bear with me. It'll subside, I hope. Uh, but if you're new here, welcome. So happy you could be here. My name is Jay, and uh, I teach video editing here on YouTube, mostly uh, in DaVinci Resolve. So that's what we're... Uh, that's what we're focusing on today. If you have any questions for me uh, today, we're going to be talking about dialogue editing. I want to kind of walk you through my process, give you some tips, some tricks, show you the tools. And uh, if you have any questions along the way, there is a form linked in the description of this stream. Click that link, fill out your question. I'll be stopping every now and then to go through that form. Uh, and I'll answer your questions as best I can. You can also pop your questions into the chat. It's not a guarantee that I'm going to get to your questions if you put them in the chat, but uh, I will do my best. If you send that question along with a super chat, that question will get bumped to the front of the line. So uh, there you go. But uh, in the meantime, let's uh, let's jump into the chat and say hi to some folks, which right now looks like uh, there's only a couple. We got uh, the Phoenix of Liberty. Hello. Uh, I see Casey Ferris is doing a live stream too. Hmm. We did not coordinate that. Uh, and Jim Robinson was watching Casey switch the channel to Jay. Good morning from Vancouver, British Columbia. Hello, Jim. It is good to see you. Uh, uh, pinch. Is that pinch check? What's going on? Uh, hello. Good to see you. Spartacus Spielt Solo. Hello. Good evening from Germany. Wow. We got people from all over today. Uh, hey, Jay, on Resolve landing page, I constantly see untitled project. Can't seem to remove it or rename it. Yeah, that is uh, what you click to just quickly jump into uh, to just jump into a new project. It's not like actually a project when you go to if you open that up, if you click on it, it'll start a new project for you. And then the first time you go to save, it'll ask you to name the project. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I wouldn't try to remove it. Um, yeah, there you, there's there's that. Uh, Darren Mostyn, your audio a little quiet. Oh, I I apologize. I turned it down because I was on a uh, I was on a, a video call and it seemed to be going a little bit too um, too loud. So hopefully uh, hopefully that helped. Uh, let me know. Oh man, man, my food and hello, Darren. Good to see you uh dad's talk tech what's going on almost forgot how to do this haven't been live in too long yeah man i it, this is only my second one back i'm still kind of getting rid of the rust getting back into the swing of things I'm, I'm happy i'm live again and uh but yeah it's taken a little bit of getting used to uh from brazil really like your work well thank you so much i really appreciate that uh that's nicer for me okay cool uh, a color guy talking about audio. I am not a color guy, Spartacus. I am an audio guy. Uh, yeah, just a, a quick brief history. I am a video editor. I'm a, a freelance video editor, uh, more of a, a generalist video editor. I do a little bit of everything, but I came from the music world. So my specialty really is audio. I love audio mixing. I love sound design. That was, uh, it's, it's my first you know, uh, audio is my first love and it's kind of the first thing that I really specialized in when I got into video editing. I just, I love storytelling too much to just stick with audio. I, I, I really wanted to learn everything. So, um, but my, my heart and soul lie in audio that is, or are you talking about Darren saying that my, my, my audio is too quiet? Um, Oh, Darren is the co. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Love from India. Thank you so much. All right. Um, 
Okay. You're very helpful or helpful for my journey from Filmora to Resolve. Well, thank you so much. That's good. So many of us came here from the music world. Isn't that right? Yes. William Justice. My man, Will. What's going on, man? All right. So we're talking about dialogue editing today, and we're going we're gonna to get into DaVinci Resolve. We're going to talk about some of the tools that I use. Uh, I'm going to use all tools that are built into the Fairlight page in DaVinci Resolve for this. But towards the end, if you guys want, I'll show you some of the third-party plugins that I use uh, in most of my projects. But uh, for this live stream, I kind of want to just use the tools that are built into Resolve. So that way, when you guys leave here, you'll um, be able to, you know, edit better dialogue and not have to go run off and, and do what I did and spend thousands of dollars on plugins um, because I clearly have a problem. Speaking of which, I'm thinking of buying a new camera. <laughs> Uh, just, you know, uh, cause again, clearly I have a problem. Uh, so before we actually get into the nitty gritty of editing dialogue, I want to talk a little bit, uh, kind of, uh, about mindset and theory when it comes to dialogue, because there's a couple things that you need to think about before you ever actually start editing. One of which is how do you want your voice to sound and that is going the answer to that question is going to be different based on it, it all depends on what kind of video you're doing like if you're doing an audio podcast you're going to want to you're going to want your voice to sound like it's on a podcast and that has to do one with the mic that you're using if you're using something like this this is the sure uh sm7b and it is a very expensive mic that is used for broadcast audio it's used for podcasting by a lot of people uh this is what is known as a dynamic dynamic I, my brain is blanking today but anyway it's a condenser mic dynamic condenser mic. It's really good for podcasting, really good for broadcast, but it's going to give a much different sound than something like a shotgun mic will. Shotgun is something you're typically going to be using when you're making videos. Um, and they both have very distinct sounds. And also if you are trying to make um, a, a video like a short film or a vlog or something, and you're trying to make your voice sound like it's a, a podcast, uh, it's not going to match the video. And that's kind of where I'm trying to get with this weird babbling spiel of mine is when you're sitting down to edit your dialogue and you think like, how do I want my voice to sound? You need to think about what sound is going to best match the video that you're making, if that makes any sense. So with that being said, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. I've got some things. Actually, I want to do a quick systems check. Um, it didn't work when I was on Daniel Batal's live stream a couple weeks ago, but I, I was using a different browser then. So I want you guys to let me know. I'm going to switch over to... Uh, there. Oh, wait, hold on. I haven't added. No, I have. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So here's DaVinci Resolve. We're in the Fairlight page. Real quick systems check. If I zoom in on, uh, on my screen here, can you guys see it zoomed in? Let me know in the chat real quick before we move any further, because I didn't really have a way to test that, uh, before. So let me know, can you see it when it's zoomed in or is it still like the full page? This bite's for you. What's going on? Jason Lorette. Hello, Alex. What's going on? Uh, yep. I see the zoom. Yes. I fixed it. I fixed it. It was all a matter of using the Chrome instead of, uh, instead of edge. Sweet. Okay. All right. Let's get into some editing here. We've got uh, this is a video. This is actually the video that is going to be coming out this Monday. Um, I'm not gonna, well, I mean, you can see up here, proxy generator tutorial. I'm doing a quick little video on the proxy generator. Uh, I'm going back just in case you are one of the many people who are moving over from, uh, from Filmora. I am doing a whole bunch of videos, uh, coming up soon. Uh, just a lot of beginner friendly tutorials to kind of help people get acquainted. So I'm about to put out a video on the proxy generator and uh, show you guys how to quickly and easily make and use proxies in your videos. Cause um, 
DaVinci Resolve can can use a lot of power. <laughs> Some people who are coming over from Filmora don't necessarily have that. So that's the video that's coming out. That's the video we're working with today. And this is a typical setup for me. Um, my general rule is when I'm setting up an editing process uh, project and I'm setting up my audio tracks, I am using basically two tracks per dialogue source. So if we zoom in on my tracks here, you can see I've got DX, that stands for dialogue. So DX A roll and DX A roll. These are all from the same source. It's the same microphone, the same location and all of that. And all of my clips are on these two tracks. And the reason why I do it in two tracks is so it's just quicker and easier to do J cuts and L cuts if I need to. So that's kind of tip number one, organize correctly. If you've got multiple people speaking uh, in multiple locations, you want you know two tracks at a minimum for each one of those sources. That way you can layer them, do J and L cuts and move around a little bit quicker. If you set that up in the beginning, you're not gonna end up with those super scary timelines that you see people posting on Twitter, which just, I don't understand why people do that but uh <laughs> you're not going to end up with that if you set it up correctly in the beginning you'll have a nice organized timeline it'll be easy to find what you're looking for um, and then below my dialogue i have an empty track here that's labeled dx mix i'll show you what that's for in a minute and uh we've got uh, our sound effects track and our music track so um yeah, that's just a typical setup. This is basically what the audio looks like in every single one of my tutorials. Um, uh, I'm not current. No, I'm not currently zoomed. Hold on. I'm seeing. I don't see a zoom. I'm not. Hey, Clint Moore. What's go? Clint Moore. Really? Holy crap. Hello. Refrag. What's going on? Ah, uh, all right. Here we go. So let's start off. First thing that we want to do because we are going to because all of this audio all of this dialogue is from the same source and from the same location and it's all just one continuous talking head thing the first thing that we're going to do is make it so that we can edit both of these dialogue tracks at the same time uh, because if we start doing each little clip individually things are going to get messed up certain sections are going to be louder and sound vastly different than others so really the best thing that we can do is edit everything together now there's a couple different things that we can do here we can we can't well the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to create a sub bus that is what's going to allow us to edit everything together so first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to where it says fair, ah, fair light, and we're gonna go to bus format. And then down here, we're going to just click add a bus. Let's go ahead and just label this DX for dialogue. We're gonna keep it in mono format and we'll just hit okay. Now we have an additional bus here. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna route our two dialogue tracks to our bus. Our bus is basically a submix. You can send different groups of tracks to another bus and that way you can edit all of those tracks together if that makes sense. It's kind of like sort of kind of like creating a compound clip. You're just taking a bunch of different things and making them into one thing if that makes sense. So uh, what we're going to do in order to route this is the first thing we need to do is we need to expand our mixer here. And here in our mixer, we have, you can see all of our tracks. We've got audio one, audio two, audio three, audio four, audio five, and our two buses. And that's all right here. So what we're going to do, if we come down to, I haven't done this in real time in a really long time. Uh, we're gonna come down to bus output. So right now it's saying that audio one is now routed to bus one. We don't want that. So we're gonna get rid of that we're going to hit this little plus sign in bus outputs and we're gonna put it into the DX bus. Now we're gonna do the same thing with audio two. We're gonna get rid of bus one, hit the plus sign, DX. And now what we've done is we've told DaVinci Resolve, hey, 
all of the audio that's coming from these two tracks, send them over to bus two, which is labeled DX. Then what we need to do is we need to route DX to bus one. So come in here and we'll hit the plus sign, bus one. And now we've told DaVinci Resolve that all of the audio that's coming into bus two is gonna get routed to bus one. Bus one is our main bus. This is our master track. Okay, everybody with us so far. Any questions so far? I'm gonna hop into the chat here. It's hard working with two monitors for this. Uh, let's see here. Hello from Switzerland. Hello, hello. Um, Uh, da, 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 da. Hey, Kyle, you look what's going on. Um, now it's zoomed in. Couldn't make out anything before that. Yeah, I'm going to try and zoom in anytime I'm going to click on something. I'm going to have everything. I'm, I'm going to have everything uh, zoomed in. All right. So not getting any questions on that part. So good. We're good. We're good. Good job. All right. Cool. Uh, water break. Then we move on. Now, personally, I like a little bit of added protection. I don't want to be necessarily messing around with all of these individual uh, with all of these individual clips here because I want everything to continue to sound like it was recorded and edited together instead of cut up into a bunch of little clips. And that added protection is going to be to bounce this mix, the mix that's going, that is taking these two audio tracks right here and bringing them into bus two. We're gonna take this bus two mix and we're just gonna bounce it to a new track. So we're going to create a new audio clip and put it on a new track. So what we do for that is we're gonna come back up this time to timeline and we're gonna go bounce mix to new track. And right here where it says bus two DX mono, we're going to hit this drop down here and we're going to send it to DX mix and just hit okay. And it's going to process. And now what we've done is we've taken all of the audio that's separated into a whole bunch of different clips across these two tracks here and we've sent them into one track right here. And now any effect that we add at the clip level, we can automatically add it to all of the clip, all of the audio instead of just one clip at a time. We can work with just this track and we have also preser preserved our original audio. So if we absolutely need to, we can get rid of this new clip and we can go back and tweak things in the original audio and we'll be good to go. Cool? Cool. All right, moving on. Uh, let's talk about order of operations, which I'm sure is going to make Darren very happy. He he loves hearing the words order of operations. Um, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about order of operations. What do we do first? All right, it's kind of the same concept as color grading. All right, we're going to do our cleanup first. We're gonna do our correction first, and then we are going to start to make it sound the way we want it to sound. All right. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of any noise. We're gonna get rid of any clipping any reverb, anything, all of that stuff is our primary focus at first. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to hear all of that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're gonna normalize our audio track. I realize I'm looking at the camera and you guys can't see me and I miss you. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna say hi real quick. Hello, hi. Um, yeah, where are you exactly, Jim? I just realized that. Um, yes, order of operations is the key to all in Resolve. Yeah, so um, what we really want to do here is we want to be able to hear everything that is in our audio clip, right? If there's noise, we want to be able to hear it. If there's reverb, we want to be able to hear it. If there's clipping, we want to be able to hear it. So really, 
Uh, what we want to do first, the very first step, is just normalizing our audio. And most of the time, that's going to mean bringing it up. If you record it hot, then you're probably going to be bringing it down. But in our case, I record it a little bit low. I always do. Uh, so we're going to bring it up a little bit. It's super, super easy. Let's go ahead and come back into DaVinci Resolve. All we're going to do is we're going to right click on our audio clip. Let's go ahead and come down to normalize audio levels. And here's how I have mine set up. All right, I've got mine set up. Let me just center this real quick. There we go. Um, I have mine set up for the BS 1770-4. That is kind of the latest and greatest uh, normalization mode. So I always use this for my meters. I always use this for normalization. And there you go. My target loudness is minus 14 LKFS. That is uh, the loudness that YouTube is looking for. Um, and we're going to do a target level of minus 2 uh, dBTP, which I can't remember what the TP stands for because my brain is not working today. But dB is decibels. You guys should all know that one. Uh, and we're just going to click normalize and wait. And we've brought up our levels a little bit. But do you see what I mean? It brought up all of my audio at the same time. So it's not going to be bringing up different clips. It's not going to be bringing different clips up a different amount. And so this is still, if we play this back, you guys uh, let me know in the chat if you can hear this. Ooh, really quick. When you're audio editing and you do this bounce mix to new track, make sure you mute your original uh, audio or else it gets really loud and you think something's wrong. Um, we're actually just going to solo this because you guys don't need to hear the music and the sound effects right now. Let me know if you can hear this. I'm going to play it back real quick. I've covered a lot of ways to get rid of choppy playback in DaVinci Resolve. I've put all those videos in a playlist that's linked below. And now with DaVinci Resolve 18, there's another way to get smooth playback. And I think this might... All right. Could you guys hear that? Let me know in the chat. We can hear. Yes, everything is working correctly. Oh, my God. It's a Christmas miracle. Um, all right. So, but you guys heard between those two first two clips, it's still like there wasn't a drastic change in the audio levels. It sounded like one consistent piece of dialogue. So there you go. Now we've brought it up a little bit louder. We can hear it a little bit more on to the next step. And the next step is going to be noise reduction. And let me make this very clear. It is noise reduction, not noise removal. If you go all the way, if you've got a lot of noise, you got air conditioners going on in the background and all of that stuff, then, and you try and remove all of that noise, that's when you're going to start to get artifacting in your audio. It's going to sound really warbly and really weird, and you don't want that. What you want to do is you want to reduce the noise as much as you can but stop before your voice starts sounding weird. So you bring it down, your voice starts sounding weird, you bring it back up again, and you just try and find that middle ground. Now, that is traditionally speaking. DaVinci Resolve 18, 18.1 to be exact, introduced us to voice isolation, which I believe is only available in studio. And for that, really, all you're going to do is you're going to come over to your uh your inspector here and you're just going to turn on voice isolation and i'm going to try and center this a little bit more there we go and then as you play it be the quickest easiest method i've right taught now, yet it's totally cranked let's talk about it and you're not really hearing much okay let's talk about because proxy my audio is actually recorded fairly cleanly. Um, so files, I'm sure most of you know what that sounds pretty good. So you can use voice isolation. It's quick. It's easy. It does take a little bit more processing power than I need to zoom out here. Um, it does take a little bit more processing power on your computer. It uses DaVinci Resolve's neural engine. So it, it might cause a little bit of lag if you don't have a powerful enough computer. I've definitely, I was editing a podcast in DaVinci Resolve and I had, uh, I had voice isolation on 
three separate tracks, all of which had like two hours worth of dialogue. And let me tell you, even on like my beast of a PC, it was, it was, uh, it was not happy with me at all. Voice isolation is studio only. Dialogue leveler is in free. Yes, and we're going to cover dialogue leveler here in a minute. So if you don't have the studio version, let me just turn off voice isolation here. If you don't have the studio version, what you can do built in to DaVinci Resolve in the free version is I can't see past my own key light. Where are we? Oh, God, I haven't done this in so long. There we are. Noise reduction right here, noise reduction. You can take this and you can place this either on the clip or you can place it on the track. I like doing things, I like doing everything on the track level. So let's just go ahead and do everything on the track level for now. Now, in a perfect world, when you recorded your audio or if you're editing somebody else's video, when they recorded audio, they left about 10 seconds of dialogue free space on their keep forgetting to switch back um in a perfect world you'll have about five to ten seconds of just room tone and you can use that to teach davinci resolves noise reduction tool you know the noise print of your audio and you can use that to kind of surgically remove the noise a little bit more but if you don't have that like i don't i don't have that right now what you can do is, let's go center this, there we go. What you can do is just go to auto speech mode. And we're just gonna play this back. These are already, but just in case you don't, proxy files are basically lower resolution copies of the original video files in your editing project that allow for smoother playback in your editing software. And for a long time, DaVinci Resolve had a sort of convoluted way of creating proxy files. In fact, they didn't even... That actually doesn't sound too bad here. Um, again, I had fairly clean audio to begin with, so we didn't, um, we didn't have to worry about it too much. But if you have a lot of noise, that auto speech mode can cause some artifacting. So you just you need to be careful about that. Really a lot of getting good dialogue. Uh, most of it, is, it has to do with actually recording clean dialogue, making sure that your microphone is as close as possible to your audio source, which in most cases will be you or your, the subject of your video. You want to make sure that your microphone is close. You want to make sure that there's no like crazy sounds going on in the background, air conditioning units. Um, I have a weird, there's like a closet on the other side of this wall here. And there's something in that closet that vibrates uncontrollably every now and then for about 10, 15 minutes. I think it might be the sump pump. I don't know, but something turns on in that closet and just goes nuts for about 10 minutes, a few times a day in my house. And so I got to make sure that like, if that turns on while I'm recording, I just got to wait or I got to start again. Uh, I try and make sure that uh, my house is sufficiently warm enough so I don't have to cut the heat. Um, I just try and make sure that you're recording clean audio and then you don't really have to worry too much about these tools. You can use them very gently and you can avoid a lot of the weird artifacting that happens when you start layering on a whole bunch of audio effects. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Alex is asking, does this also, um, is there a render in place for audio? Yes. I, well, sort of, I'll show it to you. Uh, one of the things you can do is the bounce mix track, but I'll show you something else that you can do, uh, here in a minute for, for, uh, kind of a, a render in place. Um, there is something that you can do. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, Alex is asking, uh, does this also help with wind? And the answer is yes, but wind, wind is one of those things where if it's strong enough and it's loud enough, it's going to be, uh, it's going to start causing some artifacts and you're definitely, because wind isn't always a constant noise. Sometimes it hits the microphone and it creates the plosives, um, 
that you get when you know these things you'll get that with wind um wind is swirling it is not a constant sound so any kind of like auto noise reduction is going to have a really hard time with wind um if you are that's the same thing like you want to record as cleanly as possible make sure you're using some kind of wind muff on your microphone if you're dealing with wind and if you then that should reduce it enough to where noise reduction will be a little bit more effective but if you're constantly dealing with wind <clears throat> for whatever videos you make excuse me <coughs> then honestly i would upgrade to uh i would upgrade to the studio version of davinci resolve and use voice isolation because that actually does a really good job with wind so there you go um But yeah, the, it it does. But like I said, wind, wind, wind is tough. <laughs> I've had I've had to do a lot of projects where I was cleaning up wind noise, and you got you just got to be careful with it. But it it does work. It definitely works. So we've done our noise reduction. What's next? Next is where we start getting rid of uh, some of the frequencies that we don't want. Why am I? There we go. Uh, this is where order of operations gets a little bit um, a little bit subjective. Some people like to do EQ before they do compression. Some people like to do compression before they do EQ. I personally tend to do uh, EQ before I do compression because that way I can pick out the frequencies that I don't want in my audio and I can get rid of them before I start compressing things. Um, uh, but first, actually, let me show Jim. Jim was asking if there's something like render in place for audio. Let's go ahead and ceiling fans and AC drive me crazy with noise removal. Yeah. See? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, okay. Let's take a look at uh, basically Fairlight's version of render in place. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my Eh, no, I won't. Let's just go ahead. There we go. Okay, so if you want to do something like render in place, what we can do, like let's say I added voice isolation and dialogue leveler at the clip level here and I wanted to, to do render in place. Or let's say I just wanted to render in place because I put noise reduction or whatever. What we can do is we can select the track that your clip is on and then we can use focus mode or we can use range mode. I'll go ahead and use range mode here to select the portion of your track that you want to, you know, render in place. Okay. We're going to come up to timeline and we're going to say bounce selected tracks to new layer. Click that. And it's going to process and now we've basically just taken all of the effects that were on the, the clip if we move this out of the way you can see the original clip is still there but what we've done is we've processed all those effects and we have placed them in a new clip that's on the same track, just on a new layer, if that makes sense. And that's basically rendering in place in Fairlight. <clears throat> All right, so next we're gonna talk about EQ and compression. And you've probably watched a ton of videos on EQ and compression, and I'm probably not gonna be showing you anything that's too new here um just a couple of things to keep in mind when it comes to eq um, i like doing a reductive process in eq which means i am using the eq not to boost too much what i'm really focusing on is removing things that i don't want because my microphone actually sounds pretty good naturally so all I'm trying to do is get rid of some of those unwanted frequencies. And this is actually going to just kind of help the voice sound better. It's also going to help uh, quiet some reverb. There actually isn't a built-in de-reverb tool in 
uh, DaVinci Resolve, which for the life of me, I don't understand, but there isn't. So we got to use EQ to take care of that. <clears throat> uh, of course, I can't tell you how many times I've bounced uh, tracks in a studio. Should have thought of that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I like doing it. Um, it's something that I thought of after the fact when I was doing the, uh, the podcast editing, I was like, Oh, why didn't I just, why, why didn't I just, just, yeah, bounce it to a new track and, and then just take care of it. But yeah, uh, or bouncing to a new layer is, is kind of the, the best way to render in place, I suppose. Um, okay. So we're going to start with EQ here. Let me get back to just my selector tool and we're going to do this all at the track level again because well let me let me just show you something right here this is the track level eq if i double click on this it opens up we've got four bands that we can work with we can turn on a fifth that acts as our low cut or we can make it a bell or a shelf or whatever we want um so you end up with typically five bands that you can work with. On the other hand, if you select the clip and come into the inspector and go into the EQ, the most you're going to get is four bands. So what I like to do, and this is just me, I actually tend to use both equalizers. I tend to use the track level EQ to correct the audio. So I get rid of the, because I have more bands to work with. So I get rid of the frequencies that I don't want using the track level. And then I use the clip level EQ to, I, you didn't see any of that. I just realized that. Switching back and forth is tough, man. I keep forgetting to do it. Um, all right, here we go. This here, this is your track level EQ. We got five bands that we can do basically whatever we want with, okay? This right here, uh-oh, let me uh, try that again. Boom, this right here is your clip level EQ. You've got four bands to work with. I tend to use my track level EQ to do my cleanup, and then I use my clip level EQ to shape my audio, if that makes sense. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Just stay on DaVinci Resolve. How about this? Why don't I do this? Because I like being able to see you guys. Nope, not that one. Not that one. There we go. All right. Hopefully you guys can still see the zoom. Okay. Here we go. All right. So what we're going to do here, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a low pass and a high pass. We're going to cut out the signal that is just too low for the human ear to really hear. And that's going to get rid of a lot of the rumbles in your voice and, and all of that stuff. So we'll go ahead and that's called a high pass or a low cut high pass filter. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sweep the frequency and we're going to bring it up until our voice starts to be effective. And then we're going to back off it just a little bit. So let's go ahead and we're going to play. I've covered a lot of ways to get rid of choppy playback in DaVinci Resolve. I've put all those videos in a playlist that's linked below. And now with DaVinci Resolve 18, there's another way to get smooth playback. And I think this might be the quickest, easiest method. I've okay, so right around 100, which is basically what it is every time. It's right around uh, 100 hertz. And then we're going to come to the opposite end. We're going to turn on band 6. That is going to be our, uh, our low pass filter, which is going to cut out all of the high frequencies that are too high. And I, this usually lands around 1300 Hertz or so, but let's go ahead and play. I've taught yet. Let's talk about it. Okay, let's talk about proxy files. I'm sure most of you know what these are already, but just in case you don't, proxy files 
are basically lower resolution copies of the original video files in your editing project that allow for smoother playback in your editing software. And for, okay, uh, I think that's good. The, the, it's very, um, you guys may not be able to hear very well, but you know, I got my editing headphones on. It's very, it's very close to my ears, so I'm able to hear it. But it's the same thing with both the low pass and the high pass uh, filters. You're just you're tweaking the frequencies until you start hearing a difference in your voice, and then you're just gonna back off a little bit until your voice sounds normal again. And and that's pretty uh, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, Let's see. Jason says, I usually set that first um, at 109. Is anything under that apparently you can't hear? I usually set the high pass at 13K1. Well, I'm right with you at the 13K1. Um, I typically end up sitting at around 100 hertz. It's different for every voice, to be honest, and it's different for every set of ears. So I'm usually right around 100 hertz. Um but close the effects window so it's bigger. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we're not using any more effects, so there we go. Okay, so next thing we want to do is start cutting out our other frequencies that we don't want to hear. And this is kind of the fun one, although it's really annoying to listen to, so I apologize in advance. But really what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting down or cutting out any frequencies that that sound bad really and you're going to hear exactly what i'm talking about in a second so what we're going to do in order to do this is we're going to take all uh band two let's see band two band three band four band five we're going to turn them all into bells which is this little sort of bell shaped here right now all the way up just like that Okay. Okay. Um, can you guys still see when I zoom in uh, when, when I just did that? Because I'm on a different, so you guys can still see me. Can you guys still see me zoom into DaVinci Resolve? Let me know in the chat real quick. Yes. Sweet. All right. <laughs> All right, so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to, we'll start with our kind of mid-high frequencies here. So we'll start with band four. We're going to bring band five down to our mid-highs because really most of the things that we're going to be getting rid of are going to live in the mid-lows and the mid-highs. We can leave our lows out of it. Um, we can leave our lows out of it because those are typically okay. But our mid highs and our mid lows are tend to contain the most frequencies uh, that make audio a little bit hard to listen to. So I basically keep band two and band three in my mid lows and I keep band four and band five in my mid highs. And the reason why I'm doing that, why I don't just kind of do it all willy nilly is because we can't add any additional bands in the EQ and DaVinci Resolve. We're stuck with these six bands, so we have to use them wisely. So I put them in the mid lows and the mid highs, and I leave the lows and the highs alone. Cool, let's start with our mid highs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our bands, this is band five, and we are going to just drag it up. All right, we're at plus 20 here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play our audio and we're just going to sweep the frequencies until we hear this really, really annoying whistling sound. Okay. And let's, so let's go ahead and try and find that. For a long time, DaVinci Resolve had a sort of convoluted way of creating proxy files. In fact, you they know didn't what? even call them. I'm not even in the right EQ, I don't think. I'm not. Let's turn off that EQ real quick. <laughs> I was wondering. Here we go. You guys can all laugh at me now. Let's go drop this down to 13K1. Why was I here? Oh, I was playing the wrong thing. <gasps> okay. All right, I'm gonna redo my low cut here. Some proxy files, they called it optimized media and linking the optimized media files to the original files was 
well, kind of annoying to be honest. But now with DaVinci Resolve 18, we have the proxy generator, which makes things a lot easier, a lot faster, and just, there we go. That's better. All right, um, let's go ahead once again. Let me bring my Q factors up. Set these to bells. Mid high, mid low. Crank this up and start, start playing. A lot better. Now, the proxy generator isn't built into DaVinci Resolve. It's a separate application that gets installed when you install DaVinci Resolve 18. So if you haven't installed Resolve 18, Okay, did you guys hear that really annoying whistling sound? That's the stuff that we're trying to get rid of. That is going to send an almost subconscious signal to everybody watching your video that your audio sucks. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead. What we're going to do, this was band five. So we're going to come down here to our gain. All right. And we're just going to drop that to about, I'd say going anywhere between like negative six and negative 10 is good. And then what we're going to do, let me just raise that up. We're going to widen this back out a little bit, maybe to about, Five. Okay. Now, first band down. Not so subconscious. <laughs> um, ah, Jim says, I know that this is the process that is taught all over the internet, but it's just a process for an untrained ear. All uh, speakers, including headphones, have frequencies that sound horrible when exaggerated. That is true. That is very, very true. And truth be told, um, truth be told, I don't always uh, do this process. Um, I typically only do this process if like I edit my audio and something just doesn't sound right and I can't figure out what it is, then it's like, okay, let's go back to basics and, and, and do this. But I am doing this tutorial for the untrained ear. So I'm just walking you through that process. Um, but yeah, no, that's true. All headphones, all speakers have frequencies that sound horrible when isolated. That is absolutely true. So let's go ahead real quickly and just go through all of these, uh, go through all of these frequencies here. So we're gonna keep playing. All right, let's crank four. 18 yet, go do that, then come back and watch this video. That was way too easy to find. Okay. When you first open up the proxy generator, you'll be prompted to select a watch folder, which is the folder containing the media files you want to create proxies for. So you can just navigate to that folder, select it, and then click right there. This is band. Oh, wrong bit. Wait a minute. What did I just do here? Five, four, that's band three. What just happened? Oh, that's band two. That's right. I forgot. I forgot. DaVinci Resolve, when you when you send band two up to the mid lows, it actually skips over band three for some reason. If it seems like I don't know what I'm doing, it's because I tend... Well, I'll show you what I tend to do uh, in, in most cases. All right, let's go ahead and do band three here. Um, I typically do all of this in a totally different app and I'll, I'll show you what I do uh, here in a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and play. Select folder. If you want to add another watch folder, simply click add at the bottom of the interface, then repeat the process. Next, we'll want to select the type of file. Okay. So with only four bands to work with, you're not going to be getting rid of every single frequency that, uh, that sounds bad. <laughs> it's just, it's not gonna happen. 
Um, it's just not, you know, it's just kind of a fact of life. But if you get, if you focus on the ones that sound the worst, then you'll be doing okay. So let's just take a quick before and after here. I'm going to turn off the EQ and we'll play the original audio. Well, you want your proxies to be on windows. You have the choice of H264 half res 1080, H264 1080 and h 2 six five ten eighty on mac you also have the option for pro res you can choose whatever format you'd like but i i'm not sure why i'm getting a media offline there oh that's scary um but you you can see it's a little bit less harsh it didn't make a huge difference but it sounds a little bit less harsh a little bit smoother and a little less painful okay <laughs> that's that's why we do that Ah, uh, okay. Water break. Any questions so far? What time is it? Holy moly, it's 2.50. We're going to have to go through this quickly. Okay. Uh, I would suggest... I didn't get that. Could you try again? I wasn't talking to you. Okay. <sighs> uh, I would suggest having headphones EQ that fixes bad EQ would mean that you aren't fixing the bad frequencies on every track. Some uh, with room adjusting your EQ to your speakers might be making it worse. That's true. Much better. I will go and try it now. Awesome. Um, hold on. I need, to, I need to read Jim's comment here, and I need to get the microphone out of my way so I can do that. I would suggest, you know what? Let's make it big. Let's make it big. We can do that now. Uh, I would suggest having headphones. EQ that fixes bad EQ would mean that you aren't fixing the bad frequencies on every track. Same uh, with room adjusting. Your EQ to your speakers might be making it worse. True. That is very, very true. Jason Yadlowski, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on real quick. Um, I don't have to stop right at three so we can keep going for a little bit, but, uh, at some point I do need to go get my daughter from the bus. That's probably an important thing. Uh, she's only six, so they don't let her off the bus unless somebody's at the bus stop waiting for her. Um, all right, moving on. Let's go to uh, a little bit of compression here. Compression, basically, uh, what it does is it shortens the dynamic range of your audio. So it brings your lows a little bit higher brings your highs a little bit lower. There's a very basic understanding of what a compressor does. Um, and it's good for getting rid of some big fluctuations. If we take a look at my audio here, no, I don't want to create a new preset. I, oh, I clicked the wrong button. It's hard to see past key lights, man. All right, so if we take a look, let's just go ahead and uh, just, just make my tracks a little bit higher you can see here that i have a very dynamic voice i tend to shout a lot <laughs> i tend to get very loud and then very quiet and then very loud again and it's just it's a lot so compressors are my best friend now it used to be a matter of of going into dynamics which i'll show you here this is dynamics dynamics have you know, an expander, it's got a compressor, it's got a limiter, it's got all sorts of fun little tools, and we can still use this if we want. But I will tell you, since this is a beginner tutorial and because it is available in the free version, just use the dialogue leveler in DaVinci Resolve. It's right here. It's, it's, it's right here in your inspector. Just use that. It essentially does the same thing as a compressor and it does it automatically and uh and it's kind of amazing so what we're going to do is we're going to just get out of dynamics we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our clip and we're going to click on dialog leveler in our inspector and we're going to play and we're just going to tweak our game uh, there are a couple different options here i will just tell you right now again for the sake of being beginner friendly and through getting through this optimize for most sources is good Reduce loud dialogue, lift soft dialogue, background reduction. Just keep all of that on. And we'll just go ahead and we'll play through. We're just going to tweak our gain uh, a little bit. We'll suggest using the half res 1080 if you're working with an underpowered computer. Once you've added all your watch folders and selected your file type, 
start Ooh. in the proxy generator will create proxy folders in all of your watch folders and start generating the proxy file. And the really cool thing about the proxy generator is that it maintains a constant connection with your watch folder. So if you add a new media file to the original folder, the proxy generator will create a new proxy file for that media with having to do anything which is super cool. Once you've created your proxies, you're free to open up resolves. That sounds uh, pretty good to me. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look at a quick before and after. We're gonna do that uh, little render in place trick that I showed you earlier. So we're gonna come down, grab our range tool, uh, select our track, quick little range selection, boom, timeline, Bounce select a track to new layer. Let that do its thing. Wow, that is uh, that is that is taking a little bit of time. Ah, uh, let's see. Brian says, "Hey guys, even with today's powerful PCs, are proxy files almost always used or rarely used for most projects?" Um. I tend to not really need them for uh, on on my computer, um, but I know a lot of people who do. So I would say that they are probably still a good idea. Okay, so if we take a look just at this section right here all right and we just come what did i just do <laughs> i clicked something i shouldn't have clicked there we go and there we go okay so if we take a look at our clips right here you can still see we've got dynamics in my voice but it's not nearly as extreme as it was and that is the whole point of compression to to just reduce the extreme fluctuation in different parts of your voice so that's a good little quick before and after there you go uh come can't wait to comment on the proxy generator, if you aren't doing cloud, use the old way. I, I disagree, man. Although I do typically use cloud. That way I have the option to pick something up on my on my um, iPad. But I typically, like if I do, I, I don't know, maybe just because I don't like the old way. <laughs> I never liked the old way. I was very excited about the proxy generator. But anyway, that's a topic for a, a different thing. But I look forward to reading your comments as usual. Um, all right, so we've done our EQ. We've done our corrective EQ. We've done our compression. Now, now let's go ahead and do a little bit of sweetening of the voice. And for that, we're going to use our clip level EQ. I need to get back into my selector. Let's go ahead and zoom out on my timeline. Uh, bring this down because it's just annoying me quite a bit. All right. So, uh, this is like kind of the last step, sort of, sort of, kind of. So, we're going to do a little bit of sweetening of the voice here. So, uh, for this, I'll use the clip EQ because I don't have to use a lot of bands. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into our inspector. We're going to turn that EQ on for the clip. Come on, mouse. Don't fritz out on me now. We're going to turn on band one. What is my mouse doing right now? Turn on band four. That's getting annoying. All right. And we're just going to drop two a little bit. We're going to drop this middle frequency just a little bit. And guys, this is all. Actually, I was wrong. We're going to bring two up just a little bit. Just by like one and a half or two. Really? 
This is where you just kind of boost your low end and your high end, maybe drop the mids a little bit, kind of just do whatever you got to do to make it sound the way that you want. So let's go ahead and just play We've our audio. We've covered a lot of ways to get rid of choppy playback in DaVinci Resolve. I've put all those videos in a playlist that's linked below. And now with DaVinci Resolve 18, there's another way to get smooth playback. And I think this might be the quickest, easiest method I've taught yet. Let's talk about it. There we go. Okay, let's talk about proxy files. I'm sure most of you know what these are already, but just in case you don't, proxy files are basically lower resolution copies of the original video files in your editing project that allow for smoother playback in your editing software. And for a long time, DaVinci Resolve had a sort of convoluted way of creating proxy files. In fact, they didn't even call them proxy files. They called it optimized media and linking the optimized media file. Okay, so typically what I do here, and this is just, I went through it quickly because I know my voice, but I typically bump up the low end just a little bit by like, you know, one and a half to two decibels. And I bring, my high end usually around the you know four and a half to five thousand decibel or hertz range i bring that up by somewhere around three decibels and that just kind of gives me a fuller voice uh it warms it up in the low end it sweetens it up in the high end and it just sounds a little bit less flat a little bit more dynamic and i just personally like the way that it sounds so that um yeah so that's that's what i do and at this point it's just a matter of we'll go ahead and just renormalize this clip which is the same process that we did before i'm going to normalize my audio levels minus 14 lkfs minus 2 dbtp normalize and Let's go ahead and mute our old audio or mute our new audio. Go back, unmute our old audio, play it, and we'll just listen to the difference. I've covered a lot of ways to get rid of choppy playback in DaVinci Resolve. I've put all those videos in a playlist that's linked below. And now with DaVinci Resolve 18, there's another way to get smooth playback. And all right. And now let's go back and listen to our new dialogue. I've covered a lot of ways to get rid of choppy playback in DaVinci Resolve. I've put all those videos in a playlist that's linked below. And now with DaVinci Resolve 18, there's another way to get smooth playback. And I think this might be the quickest, easiest method I've taught yet. Let's talk about it. There you go. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit deeper, a little bit clearer, and it sounds better. It's not perfect. I'm going to go in and tweak this before we actually like go live with the video on Monday, but that is my basic process right there. If I were to only use tools that were built into DaVinci Resolve. So there you go. There you go. Now, real quick, like I said, I typically don't do my dialogue editing in DaVinci Resolve. I cut it up in DaVinci Resolve. I do my final mixing with the other elements in DaVinci Resolve, but I don't do my actual audio editing in DaVinci Resolve. What I do is I come down, I, I you know, bounce it all to a new track and I right click on my track. I go down to external audio process and I click RX 10. and it opens up the RX10, the Isotope RX10 audio editor. And here I have every single tool that I would ever possibly need, including D-Reverb, including a bunch of different plugins and limiters and just all kinds of stuff to where I can make my voice sound exactly the way I want it. Now this isotope is stupid expensive. And unless you're actually making money with making videos and even then, unless like audio editing is part of your 
paid work, I would not suggest going going with isotope. They're expensive and it turns into an addiction really fast because you get in the door with a really sweet deal and then they give you loyalty discounts and you just keep upgrading until when I was at ResolveCon, uh, I ended up purchasing, purchasing the everything bundle, which means every single plugin that they make. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, there you go. I put a question in the forum for you. All right, Darren, I'm going to be getting to that in just a second, but yeah, I mean, they've got things like this. This is like the greatest plugin here, right? Ever, ever. This is called uh nectar. It's Nectar Pro. They've got a whole bunch of different presets for dialogue and music and just all sorts of stuff, but you can add a whole chain of effects here. Like got EQ, got a compressor, a de-esser, uh, all kinds of things. Delay, dimension, gates, harmony, it, reverb, just everything. And yeah, it, it's great. So anyway, this is where I typically do my audio editing, which is why I probably sounded a little rusty going through the DaVinci Resolve tools because I don't do this stuff in DaVinci Resolve. I bounce it out to Isotope. I do all my stuff there. And then I bring it back into DaVinci Resolve, which is just a matter of hitting save in Isotope. And, and it goes back to DaVinci Resolve. And then I do my final mixing and all that stuff. So that's that. Let's add... Or let's answer some questions, shall we? I should probably, uh-oh. I should probably go into my forms. Where are my forms? There's my forms. <coughs> we've got, we've got two responses here. Settings. Responses, individual, there we go. This one, oh, this is uh, from last week. Yes, okay, question from Darren Mostyn. Do you measure your videos for LUFS at minus 14 for YouTube? I don't, but when I do stats for nerds on YouTube videos I upload, YouTube always says about minus 10 dB, which I think means YouTube adds 10 dB to my mix. You are half right. <laughs> you are half correct on that minus 10. So, uh, YouTube will lower your audio if it's too loud, but it will not raise your audio if it's too quiet, unless something has changed in the last year, which means if your reading is minus 10, that means that means you're about 10, you know, below where you should be. Um, so I would always normalize to, I don't normalize all the way up to minus 14. I typically, I typically stick around minus 17 because it's still loud enough to, if there's like a difference between like a minus 14 luffs and a minus 17 luffs, like the, the difference isn't that great. So it's, it, it's okay if I'm like a little bit quieter and also, um, you know, if the video they watch before me is at minus 14, but the one after mine is like minus 10, I can be a nice middle ground stepping zone. I, I think of it as like a, a public service. So yeah, I typically normalize to about minus 17, minus 16, something like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, YouTube will not raise your audio if it's too low. So Jim is answering the question in the chat about why a bus is called a bus. A bus in audio refers to an electrical term, bus bar, which is essentially a conductor carrying a common signal path. That is true. Like if you look at an electrical panel and you take out all of your circuit breakers, you'll see two strips of metal. I was an electrician for 15 years. This, this I know, I actually know what I'm talking about. I could, if my cord was long enough, bring you over to the electrical panel for my house, which is conveniently in my studio. Um, but yeah, you'll see two strips of metal going down kind of the center of your electrical panel. And those are called bus bars. And that bus bar, those bus bars are what your, um, those are what your, uh, your circuit breakers are tapping onto in order to bring power from your electrical panel to the wiring that goes out to your plugs and your switches and your lights and all the, all the stuff in your house. 
<coughs> um, I'm used to broadcast levels being more like minus nine. Yeah, and oh, so broadcast is minus nine, and isn't I thought broadcast was minus twenty three luffs or something like that. Daughter bus. <laughs> Thanks. What time is it? 3.09. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I got to leave here in about 40 minutes. So <laughs> speaking of buses, uh, minus nine DB, not Luffs. Okay. That, that makes sense. Uh, I bought, I thought a bus was a mode of transport. It's that too. And I mean, really, if you think of it in electrical terms, it still is a mode of transport. It is, this is the way that the electricity transports itself to the rest of your house. So there you go. So yeah, guys, um, that's, uh, that's the thing. I, it's showing that I have like a horrible internet signal right now and I just got super blurry. What just happened? My internet just decided to get weird on me. Just love the Midwest. Um, <laughs> There you go. Uh, good one this week, Jay. My area of weakness. Oh, I'm glad I could help. I hope you guys uh, got some. Can somebody, I, I have my calendar. I got to figure out my calendar for some reason, whenever I put something in my calendar, it like adds it twice. And I don't know why, but I also have my echo. I have the microphone muted so I don't accidentally set it off, but I have my echo set to basically read out my calendar to me. And it gives me like a 10 minute warning for everything in my calendar. But because it double enters everything when I put a new thing in my calendar, I get a double readout. And I don't understand why. I got to figure that out because it's really annoying. Um, <coughs> so, uh, Jay Levin stats for nerds said this live is normalized, normalized a hundred percent. Sweet. I don't know how I did that. That is uh, probably all stream yard. I, I stream using stream yard now because it's just easier than OBS. So, um, all right guys, I hope you, I hope you found this valuable. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did let me know, in the comments, this live stream will stay live. Uh, any live stream where I actually like teach something, I'm gonna keep them live on my channel. So this will stay live. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, if you didn't learn anything, let me know in the comments uh, so I can improve. And, uh, but if you did, and if you did learn something, if you did enjoy this and you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, hit subscribe, hit the bell, I got, a new video coming out this Monday, every Monday. I got a new live stream every Wednesday. And uh, yeah, I just love talking about this stuff. But I love you guys even more. And I have to go get my daughter. So I I will talk to you guys uh, next time. I will see you on the interwebs. Later. <laughs>